Yeah, we're not doctors or giving any medical advice. This show is intended for educational purposes only, and you should talk to your doctor about any medical issues. Now let's get at it. Welcome to Chat the Fat, where nutrition authors Nissa Gron and T.C. Hale are going to break down common low-carb mistakes. Let's chat all things low-carb, keto, digestion, and more so you can maximize your results. Hello, good people, and welcome back to Chat the Fat. This is episode 77. I'm T.C. Hale. I'm here with Nissa Gron, and today uh, we're going to provide know-how. We are. We're going. We're getting ready for the keto challenge. It is almost here. Um, I know our challengers are getting really excited, so we are going to talk about how they can get prepared because when you sign up for the keto challenge, you are competing for prizes, including the top prize of five hundred dollars. So that's that's kind of fun, and I kind of feel like this is going to be the biggest challenge yet. I feel like there's a lot of people that are kind of getting excited about it, and. There's a lot of chattery kind of things going on. I think there's going to be a lot of people. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, we invite all of our group members to come join us, but also other people. If you are not a part of our Keto Decoded group, we invite other people from the outside to come in and get motivated and start gaining the momentum that you receive when you join the Keto Challenge. Cool cap. All right, so let's, let's break it down a little bit. All right, so like we were just talking about this week, we are getting hopeful keto challengers prepared to win that big $500 keto challenge prize. And since we want all of our listeners to join the ranks of previous keto challenge winners like Karen P, who was the very first winner, and she lost nine pounds in 21 days. Then we had Shannon B, who lost 13 pounds in 21 days. Another Shannon, Shannon H, was down 17 and a half pounds in only 21 days. Dasha lost 18.2 pounds in the same three weeks. And finally, Jason, he is our biggest winner to date. He lost 25 pounds in only 21 days. JD, that's my man. That's a, I actually went to high school with him, but I haven't seen him since I've been back here in town. He still lives around here, but he didn't win because I was prepping him in high school. I didn't really know this stuff in high school. So, Yes, he's, he's not cheating. He did that all on his own. He actually was in the last Keto Challenge in June, and he was over the 20-pound mark again, so he's definitely killing it. And, of course, if you notice a trend of the weight loss drastically increasing each time a new challenge rolled around, then you are definitely paying attention because every new challenge has been fine-tuned and revved up for even better results for our challengers. So during the last challenge this past June, keto challengers lost a combined total of 247 pounds in only 21 days. And the exciting thing is this time around, TC is joining me to co-host the Keto Challenge. So with two of us leading the challengers to victory, he will be coaching everyone, not just Jason. And so you <laughs> don't want to miss out on this three-week live event. Yeah, and the, the way that the, the results do seem to get better each time. And with all the new tools that you've created this time, it kind of seems like people are going to lose weight like right when they sign up. Like just when they sign up, it seems like, that their pants are going to get loose. They will. And I've been working on some things that not even past challengers know about. It's going to be brand new to them, but it's definitely going to help them reach their goals even faster. Of course, um, speaking of reaching your goals even faster, we are holding a free keto master class to help you get ready for the keto challenge so you can get even better results. Basically, the tips we're going to give will help you cheat for that big $500 prize and, of course, the big results I just mentioned. So if you haven't already, make sure that you reserve your spot now for the free keto master class at eatingfatisthenewskinny.com slash masterclass. Yeah, and that's great because even at the end of that, you know, you're going to get a lot of information. But at the end, we do a Q&A so that you guys can just bring any questions. They're like, okay, I'm, I'm about to start this. And what do I need to know about this? And how do I do this so that you're really geared up and, and ready to get a good jump start? Yes, and we will both be there. So definitely show up live, show up with your questions so we can get them all answered so you can be our next big winner that we brag about on the podcast. All right, so now let's talk about three tips that you can get started with right now to get ready for the next keto challenge. And tip number one is if you haven't already started following a keto lifestyle, it's a good idea to make a slow, low-carb transition before hopping into full-fledged keto. 
So challengers get big results because they're following keto the right way, which means a diet plan that's really low in carbs. And while that's really a great way to get the big results that challengers get, it's not always the best way to get started. You'll always want to ease your body into a keto plan by reducing carbs to a low carb level first, since um, if you're new, that might stress your body out too much by just jumping straight into keto levels of carbs. And I wanted to bring this tip up now, since you have a few weeks before beginning the challenge, it's really a great time to start priming your body, start reducing your carbs now to a low carb level first. And then once we open the doors for the keto challenge, you can really hit the ground running by lowering your carbs to keto levels of carbs. Yeah, you know what's good about that too is that it allows you to try out some new foods. Oh, here's some new foods, I'm gonna try this. I like this, I'm gonna find this gonna work. Because when you're doing low carbs, uh, that doesn't mean that every single meal has to have low carbs. Maybe you have um, low carbs in two or three meals, but you could try a meal in a day that doesn't really have many carbs at all. And so that way you're kind of gearing up for getting into keto, finding some things that you like to eat, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I think a lot of people get into trouble with keto because they try that all or nothing approach where they are going from one day where they're eating 300 carbs every single day, like a lot of people do. And then the very next day, they try to just eat less than 20. And that might go well for a day or two, but a few days into that, you're going to be miserable. You're going to want to quit. So taking the time to prepare your body like that is a good idea. And no, you might not see the huge weight loss that you want that people brag about, but a lot of those people gain the weight back or they don't last very long. Um, I did want to note that for those who are scared to try low carb because they might not get all of the results they want, I actually followed low carb for, I think it was like the first nine months and I lost something like 70 pounds. So it doesn't always have to be all or no nothing when it comes to a keto lifestyle. You can get results just by lowering your carbs. Right. Especially if you've just been eating standard American diet for you know your life, basically. When you adjust out of that, even into just low carb, the results can be completely amazing even before you get to keto. And of course, if you are following Tony's advice and you're working on your digestion while doing it, that will help you as well. But we'll get to that in a few minutes because we do have that as one of our tips, of course. Um, but it's also important to note that our Keto Decoded member, Susie, took this slow and steady approach, and she actually posted in our group a few weeks about it that she was down nearly, or I think it was over 50 pounds, and she didn't show any signs of slowing down, and she credited this to a slow and steady approach, and she said that she could never accomplish this before because she just always had that all-or-nothing mindset that a lot of dieters have, and <clears throat> when you have that mindset and then you make a mistake, then you just say, screw it, this isn't working for me, and you give up. But when you take the slow and steady approach and you take baby steps to reach your goal, then that's when it just starts to become easy and starts to fall into place. Right. So I think that's a great thing about the challenge is that it allows you to really focus in. Everybody, you know, the whole group is focusing in. There's all this motivation. There's all this camaraderie. And it allows you to really focus in on what you're doing. But don't feel like you have to maximize everything if this is the first time you've ever keto. You know what I mean? You do want to kind of get into it and allow your body to adjust a little bit. And know that, you know, when people do the challenge, they always want to do it again. So know that you're going to have other chances to do this. Um, and you may be a full on keto or by that point, if this is your first time doing it. So you do want to listen to your body and don't feel like you have to over push just to try and, you know, win kind of thing. You don't want to stress your body out. Yes. But we will get into that during the keto challenge. Everyone's going to take it at their own pace to get their best results. Um, so speaking of best results, let's get into tip number two, which is to ease your way into an easy intermittent fasting routine. Now, there are some intermittent fasting experts that will tell you to just jump right into the deep end and force a longer fast before you become fat adapted, before you even really understand what fasting is. And that's definitely not what we're telling you to do when we say to ease into an easy intermittent fasting routine because doing this can stress your body out and it can actually cause a weight loss stall. Even if you feel like you're eating less food, if you're stressing your body out by withholding food when you're hungry, that can actually have the opposite effect. Um, 
And if you try to force your fast or make some of the other many mistakes that some experts advise when it comes to fasting, you're going to feel miserable. And like I just talked about, you are not going to get results. So the best way to add fasting to your keto lifestyle is to always start slowly. And I feel like a lot of people, especially if you've been following low carb or keto for at least a little time, that you could start with an easy 12 hour fast. And I did this and I basically just stopped eating after dinner. So, you know, before keto, I would have popcorn or some kind of snack after dinner. So I basically just cut that out. So I stopped eating around seven and then I just didn't eat again until I, I was awake for an hour or so. So maybe like 7 a.m. the next day. And that's already a 12 hour fast because when you're sleeping, that actually counts as fasting time. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, it's not hard. That's what, what a lot of people do already. Yeah. And, and something like that, it actually can um, help not only lose weight, I think it does help with your progress, but it could also help improve your health. Like in my case, when I first started, I had diabetic blood sugar levels. And um, by fasting for just 12 hours, or sometimes I push it to 14 hours, it wasn't harsh on my body. And I feel like that combined with lowering my carbs work together to bring those blood sugar levels down into a normal range pretty quickly. I think it was definitely under six months and I didn't have to rely on any medication ever for that. Right. So um, when do you think that someone, a challenger, maybe should not consider starting this 12 hour fast? Well, if you've been living on carbs and uh, that's been all that, you know, mostly what you eat, like let's say maybe you even feel lousy when you eat protein or fats, maybe they make you nauseous or it kind of sits there like a rock in your stomach. And these are all signs that you're not really breaking those foods down. So you might have some work to do to fix that so that you can reduce your carbs and increase. Because when you reduce the carbs, you got to increase something or you're just kind of starving yourself. So if you're someone that feels lousy when you eat when you eat proteins and fats, you're going to need to do a little bit of work before you're ready to go without food. And another great test is you can just test your blood pressure, um, you know, away from food. And if the top number is below 112, that's a sign that your resources may be a little bit low. So trying to go too long without food may be difficult for you, and it may increase those stress hormones in your body, which can restrict the ability to lose weight. Uh, instead of maximizing weight loss like people think they're doing when they try to go a long time without eating. So when you say low blood pressure, what numbers should they be looking for? So when you do it, if you use an automatic blood pressure cuff, it comes up with the top number is called the systolic number. Is that just that number on the top, and then there's a middle number, and the bottom number is usually your pulse. So that top number, you want it to be over 112 uh, when you test at least two hours after a meal. Don't test right after a meal. So 112 is really what you're wanting to look at. And we see people all the time that are like 90, 92. And of course, their doctor just tells them, oh, great job. You're not going to have a heart attack. That's awesome. So they don't really understand that that's a sign that minerals and resources are very low. And how much do you think it goes up when you go to the doctor? Because I know like maybe your heart's going a little faster, or you're nervous. Like what do you think? Right. Well, they call it white coat uh, syndrome or something like that, where you have high blood pressure when you go to the doctors. But it's a legitimate thing. You're stressed. You think he's going to, every time you go to the doctor, you're going to think, well, is he going to tell me that I have to have my head cut off because I have a huge tumor in there and they just have to remove my whole head? And so you're stressed about it. And when you're stressed, your vascular system constricts because you move into that fight or flight state. And when it constricts, that makes it harder for the blood to flow. And so the pressure to move that is increased. So your blood pressure goes up. So yeah, that's not uncommon at all to see somebody go up 10 to 20 points when they're at the doctor's office. All right. So when you're saying that 112, you're talking about when you're at home and taking it yourself, not the last time you went to your doctor because it's probably already higher. So right. if you're already at 90, which I commonly was. Um, yeah. then it's probably even lower than that, which means you need help. <laughs> yeah. You need to, need to fix a few things. Yes. All right. And, and the other thing that I thought of um, someone who might want to avoid a 12 hour fast when they jump into the challenge is if you start this, if you try to do that 12 hour fast where you stop eating after dinner, and then if you are consistently waking up at say like two or three in the morning, 
you're wide awake and um, you can't figure out why, that's actually a, could be a sign that you're not fat adapted and you're running out of fuel while sleeping because it actually does take a lot of fuel just to sleep. Um, so if you're wide awake and you can't get back to sleep and you're not sure why and it keeps happening, that could be a reason and you might want to eat a little bit closer to bed until you become more fat adapted. Right. And that's just your body. It's just a defense mechanism. It's just your body saying, hey, resources are really low. So go get out of bed and do something about it. You know, your body operates like you need to go and chase down a zebra and whack it with a stick. You know, that's how your body was built. It doesn't know that you have, you know, special K of kitchen downstairs. It, 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 so it plans ahead. But when resources are going low, that's one possible cause for insomnia. And it's very common when someone is first starting keto and they're removing this fuel source that their body's been using and they're trying to get the body to use something different. Yeah. And actually, um, speaking of that, that actually happened to me last night because I haven't been feeling good. Don't worry if you're listening and you're not watching on YouTube, I'm wearing a mask. So you are protected. <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't been feeling that great this week. And so I didn't really eat a ton yesterday. And even though I'm fat adapted, my body's just all crazy right now. So I was actually, my son came into the room at like two in the morning because he had a bad dream and it took me a while to get back to sleep. And I realized it's because I didn't really eat anything for dinner and I didn't really eat much yesterday just because I wasn't feeling good. Right. And, and if you do have any type of cold, whether you got a Rona or whatever you got, um, a lot of the body's resources go towards fighting off that enemy. So then all of a sudden we have a lot less resources than we do. That's why we kind of get emotional when we're sick and we're just, we're grumpy and all those things, we're lethargic, depressed. All those things can happen when we're sick because all those resources are going towards fighting off an invader and we don't have as much left to allow our body to function the way it's supposed to. All right. So all good reason. I think starting a 12 hour fast is great, but definitely a few reasons you might want to avoid it, even if you are a keto challenger. All right. So let's get into tip number three, and this is where TC will shine. <laughs> Um, you want to make sure that you're starting to get your digestion up to par now, because if you are just starting out on keto or low carb, chances are you've been in the mainstream dieting world for some time, and that means your digestion could likely use at least a little bit of fine tuning. And while we do work on improving digestion during the keto challenge, since this is a much overlooked and really important part of succeeding with keto, we will do that work, but you can start making some of those improvements now. Um, so if you're not really sure where to start, you can definitely check out the digestion course, which is at kickitnaturally.com forward slash keto digest. Yeah, so you can definitely get into that. It's 50 and it's like 50 cents. Yeah, it's just, it's just to get in so we don't get spam registrations. Definitely worth your two quarters to start getting your digestion up to par now so you are ready for that challenge. Now, um, which digestive problems should most new ketoers look for when they're first starting out? Well, and when Nissa says, this is where I shine, which she, by shine, she means ramble. Um, <laughs> So, but you know, the biggest thing with keto and otherwise a lot of people will have trouble when they first start out is that they, uh, their bile is not flowing correctly. It's too thick to move. And uh, bile is really a, a crucial aspect of digestion because it helps us break down the fats that we consume. It emulsifies those fats so that the body can use them. So a lot of things can make a person's bile not flow correctly, and it's very common. So symptoms that you, it may not be going well is if you have like a loose stool or the color of your stool is lighter than the color of cardboard, or you ever experience uh, like nausea, or um, if you have skin or acne type issues, you know, all of those are signs that bile may not be flowing well. So if that's the case, you really want to fix that before you move to a diet that's mostly fat. If your body can't process fat well, and you're going to go ahead and eat mostly fat, how, how do you think that's going to go? And how quickly, like if someone starts using beet flow or Xenoplex or whatever, um, how much time does that take for most people to kick in? Well, a lot of people are not really broken. Like if you have like gallstones or something, that's a really strong sign that your bile is very backed up and you know, you might need some work and we teach people how to do like what we call a beet flow flush where you take a whole bunch of beet flow at once that kind of boosts thinning that out faster and 
We use coffee suppositories that can kind of speed up the whole process if somebody's really having a hard time. But for most people, they can just start taking a, a supplement we use called beet flow, not beet root capsules. That's not the same thing. And, and beet root uh, alone does not help. But most people can see improvement within a couple of weeks. So it really depends on how bad off, bad, bad off you are. Um, are you able to remove the things that are causing the trouble in the first place? Because for a lot of people, what's thickening up their bile is all of the processed carbs and grains that they're eating. But when you go keto, you remove those. So a lot of people are removing the trouble when they start. But if you're not taking action to improve it, if, you're, if, uh, if bile's not flowing well, you're probably going to get nauseous eating that much fat. Or all that fat is going to go screaming out the back door and it's going to lift you off the toilet like a rocket. So either of those things can happen. And that's when those things happen or a person gets like really bad breakouts or keto crotch, you know, whatever they want to call it. That's all those things are just the body saying, look at all these fats coming in that we can't process. How can we get them out of the body as fast as we can? Because right now they're a burden. So it's push it out through the skin, push it out through the back door make you feel nauseous. So maybe you hurl and it comes out that way. So those are all those things you hear about people experiencing from keto, but you can see it's because they're doing keto when their body's not set up to keto very well. Now, was that what you would call shining? That, that was rambling is what, is what that <laughs> no, was. Shining, shining star. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I remember when I first started taking beet flow, I was pretty messed up and doing the beet flow flush actually made me more nauseous at first because it was knocking around all those toxins and all that bad stuff. Right, so all those toxins, like the bile is where the, mod, the body removes the filth from the body. It puts it in the bile, it filters it out of the liver and puts it in the bile. So if that's not moving, once it starts to move, sometimes a little too, too much toxins can come out at once and you have to kind of slow down the process, maybe drink some extra water, <clears throat> water, and then you really start to improve once the bile starts to move and you can start to get those toxins out. Okay, so I think, um, yeah, if you're listening now and you want to end the keto challenge, you want to learn how to do keto the right way, it's definitely worth starting this kind of routine right now because by the time the challenge starts, you can be prepped and ready to go and through all of the um, nausea stuff or anything else that might happen. Do you, now since these challengers are competing for a big prize and some of them do get really competitive, which makes the challenge fun, mm -hmm. is there any one first step that someone can take when it comes to improving digestion to be more competitive? I would say that's the big one, but it could depend on what the symptom the person is having. Let's say if you're having acid reflux or bloating or constipation, or when you eat a protein like a steak or something, it sits in your stomach and feels like a rock for till like the next morning. You know, all of those things are signs of uh, stomach acid that is not producing correctly. So you're not breaking down your food. So that becomes, that would become the most important first step uh, if that was you, if, if those symptoms were you. But if uh, you're having any of the lack of bile flow symptoms, that really is the most important thing because you're about to increase your fat intake and you want to be able to process those fats so your body can use that. That's when your body says, oh, I can use this why don't I use this as fuel since you're not giving me any more of those uh, chubby hubby bowls of ice cream? So that's what you want. But if you can't process the fats, then your body's like, oh, you're not giving me a new fuel. You're just giving me a burden I have to deal with because I can't digest these fats. So that I would say that that's probably the most important is working on bioflow. Okay. So if you have bioflow issues, definitely visit the digestion course so you can get that underway before the challenge begins. Um, let's quickly review the three keto challenge prep tips we talked about today. And those are number one, make sure you start with a slow, low carb transition first, so you're not shocking your body. Number two, ease your way into an easy intermittent fasting routine. And number three, start working on your digestion so you get that up to par now.
Now, these are only three of the five tips that I put together for those who are really serious about joining the Keto Challenge. And with a grand prize of $500 and results like past challengers like Jason, who lost 25 pounds in 21 days, or even Donna, who has dropped a total of three pant sizes over the course of two challenges, why wouldn't you be serious about joining? We get serious results during these challenges because it's a short three-week period where challengers dedicate this time to focusing on themselves. They have three weeks of focus on getting keto right, and then they can use all of that momentum that they gain during the keto challenge to keep getting big results week after week month after month, like a lot of our challengers go on to do. So if you want to learn the other two tips so you can start prepping for your big keto challenge win, or even if you just want the tips to help speed up your results with keto, you can get all of those tips at when you sign up for our masterclass at eatingfatisthenewskinny.com slash masterclass. So when you sign up, not only are you going to reserve your spot for the class, but you'll also get the other tips so you can start preparing. All right, speaking of that masterclass, we are holding that free keto masterclass where we are going to talk about three big mistakes that you could be making that are actually stalling your weight loss. Now remember, we will be live on Tuesday, October 13th at 1 p.m. Eastern, and this class will be filled with amazing strategies to help you get better results, so you definitely don't want to miss it. We also will have a few Keto Challenge bonuses on the Masterclass that you can't get anywhere else, so you'll definitely want to tune in live and these bonuses are actually going to help you feel like you're cheating when it comes to winning that big prize. Usually we don't like cheaters, but if you're using these time-saving and money-saving tips to cheat when it comes to better weight loss results, we are okay with it. Right. And if, if you like working during that time or something, you can quit your job so that you can be there live because you're going to get good tips and understand what to do and probably win the $500 anyways. Yeah, that's more than most jobs pay these days, right? Right, it's very reasonable, good, good, good advice I just gave right there. Yes, and if you really love keto, they can join your coaching program, make a career out of it. I think <laughs> that's a whole new plan here. Uh-huh, that's right. a NISA plan. Yes, get them, get them in. All right, so speaking of amazing results, we will be back next week to talk about some of the keto challenge secrets that previous challengers used to get big results. And of course, everything they did right when it comes to forming habits that not only made them a success during the three-week challenge, but how they keep the results coming long after the challenge ends. Yeah. So if you need to get any of those links that Nissa talked about there, you can go to the show notes page at chatthefat.com forward slash episode 77, and we'll have those there for you too. Coolio? Yes, we're good. All right. We will see you guys next week. Challenge on. Whether you're brand new to keto or just looking to move past roadblocks, join us for our next Troubleshooting Keto Master Workshop. Go to chatthefat.com slash workshop to find upcoming dates and register for this totally free event. You just might find your missing piece of the puzzle. Until then, we'll see you next week on Chat the Fat.